Hey guys, it's Lexi, and in this video on alkene reactions, we're going to be talking about halohydrin formation. Here we have another example of halohydrin formation. Feel free to pause the video so then you can check your work. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we've got our double bond, and we're going to confirm that this is actually halohydrin formation. So we've got the double bond, Cl2, and then we want to check to make sure we're using a protic solvent, and we are, we're using methanol. So the first step is the double bond is going to attack one of the chlorine atoms, and then the bond between the two chlorines will break and go to the second chlorine. We are going to add our first chlorine to the less substituted position, so we're going to look at our two options and determine which carbon is less substituted. In this case, it's going to be the carbon on the bottom. Remember, the less substituted carbon is also the carbon that has more hydrogens. So I'm going to put my first chlorine on a wedge. Like I mentioned, you can put it on a wedge or a dash initially. It doesn't matter. And the chlorine has these lone pairs. And remember, it's going to donate a little bit of electron density to the carbon atom. And the reason it does that is because the carbon atom there is deficient. Remember that carbon used to have a double bond and it doesn't anymore. So instead of that carbon now being a full positive carbocation, the chlorine is donating a little bit of electrons so we get a partial positive sign instead. And that's important because we said that partial positives cannot undergo rearrangements. So we will not have any rearrangements there. The next thing that's going to happen is the methanol is going to come in. Remember I talked to you guys about the reason the methanol is attacking instead of the Cl-. So you've got your Cl- and he's just floating around, and I'm talking about this guy. So I can go ahead and draw him. So we've got the Cl with some electrons around him and a full negative sign, and he's just going to be floating around. And the guy that's going to attack is going to be the methanol. So the oxygen of the methanol is going to attack the partially positive carbon. And then chlorine is going to take all of his electrons back. And you want to think, where are you going to put the methanol? Are you going to add him on a wedge or a dash? And if you think about this, on the front face, it's pretty crowded. You've got this big chlorine atom taking up the whole front face. And so methanol is going to have to come from behind and attack on a dash which is going to push the existing methyl group onto a wedge. So the existing methyl group that, that was there before is now going to be on a wedge, and then you're going to add your OHCH3 with its lone pair and positive sign on a dash. So what you'll notice, just like we mentioned before, is the relationship here of this intermediate is anti. So the reason we have these as anti to each other is because we had that cyclic intermediate over here. So remember that triangular intermediate is going to cause the methanol to come in opposite the chlorine. And so now, of course, we have to neutralize. We can't leave that positive oxygen. So another methanol molecule is going to come in and he is going to take away this hydrogen. The electrons between the O and the H are going to go back to the oxygen, and we are going to get one of our products. We are going to have the chlorine on his wedge, and then we're going to have the methanol, which is now just OCH3, since it's been deprotonated, on a dash. And then remember, you also have that wedged methyl group. So this is one of our products. However, there was no reason that the first chlorine had to add on a wedge. It could have added on a dash. Had the first chlorine added on a dash, then the back face would have been really crowded. And that means that the methanol would have attacked from the front face on a wedge. So then the methanol would have been on a wedge over here, OCH3. And then, of course, that means the methyl group would have been pushed in the back on a dash. So these are the two products that you get here. 
And you want to remember, what would the relationship be? I didn't mention this in the first example, but I want you guys to think from the first video and the second video, what would the relationship here be between these two products? So we know that they're anti-stereochemistry, right? We've got this OCH3 group on a wedge, the chlorine's on a dash, or you could have the OH, sorry, OCH3 on a dash and the chlorine on a wedge. So they're opposite each other. This is known as anti-stereochemistry, right? But what is the relationship between these two products? Well, first we want to check if there are chiral centers. And if we look here, we do have two chiral centers, respectively another two right over here. And so because the absolute configuration is opposite for both cases, these molecules are enantiomers of each other. And because we're going to form 50% of both enantiomers, 50%, 50% of the two enantiomers, that is known as a racemic mixture. So we have produced a racemic mixture here. And another thing I want you guys to note is that because we have the partial positive sign on the more substituted carbon always, that is going to lead to you having the protic solvent add on to the more substituted carbon. So you'll notice the OCH3 has added on to the more substituted carbon. If you look at the first example we did, the OH added on to the more substituted carbon. And you can hopefully appreciate why that happens by understanding the mechanism. The last thing I want to show you is what the intermediate could also be shown as. So remember that cyclic intermediate that we have? They can also show it as a chlorinium ion. So that would be where you've got the chlorine on a wedge and then the other wedge right here. And then you've got this big positive sign on the chlorine. And I want you guys to remember, this is known as a chlorinium ion. And if it were a bromine, it would be a brominium ion. So just in case you see that on, on an exam, this is the same intermediate that we saw with halogenation. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and also hit the notification bell so that you can stay up to date when I upload new videos.